So I want to welcome Laura Wiley, uh, who is an assistant professor at the University of Colorado. Um, she's perhaps best known for her wildly popular Coursera course titled Introduction to Clinical Data Science, which has more than 11,000 people enrolled in it. And her lab um, develops methods for using electronic health data and record data for research. And today we're very glad to have her speak about a review R an interface to review clinical records built with Shiny. So please welcome Laura with a warm round of applause emojis. Thank you so much for that great introduction. So for everyone, uh, David Mayer is in the chat. He is the actual lead developer of ReviewR. So he is the one that has made all of this work and done all the cool um, details. So as you have questions, he's gonna be operating in the chat to answer those along. So ReviewR is a passion project of mine over the past few years, focusing on how to do chart review. So we all need to do chart review, right? We're building our prediction models. We need to build our gold standard cohorts. We need to do some technical validation of our work. And as we all know, it's not the most fun thing. It's not the most glamorous thing. Um, and unfortunately, there's a lot of structural challenges with doing chart review. So one of my collaborators um, operates at an institution that will not grant non-research or non-clinical researchers access to EPIC or Cerner, pick your EHR. And, you know, that's obviously a problem. So he's having to do all of his validation using the source database in their EDW, which is clearly suboptimal. But even when you have access to EPIC, um, a lot of my clinical colleagues run into the problem of, they only have a single monitor. So now you need to have hyperspace up. You're trying to search through things. You're also trying to juggle your red cap window or your Excel document, and you're constantly flipping back and forth between them. And as a collaborator, it's frustrating because uh, my collaborator will just not do chart review until he happens to be in the radiology suite where he has lots of big monitors. So all of this suggests that what we really need is a workflow enabled tool to allow us to do chart review in a better, more smooth mechanism. And so enter ReviewR. There is a better possibility. So this is the core review interface within the ReviewR Shiny app. And it has sort of a standard um, view that is just a more data-driven view of a medical record. So along the top left panel, you have your subject ID with standard demographic information, um, like their gender, their birth date, and you'll notice whether any of the other REDCap reviewers have completed their review. We have a navigation panel in that upper right-hand corner where you can select a particular record or just move between records with previous and next. In the bottom left quarter panel is our most important data where we have all of the clinical information. So as you think about the different types of data that you might have, each of those gets a tab. And so you can look at the notes tab and um, take a look at all the data that you might have in your EDW. And finally, in the right hand side, we've got our review interface where you can actually record your chart abstractions and store them for future research as you're using your um, machine learning or other algorithm development. And the thing that's really cool is not only is this a nice single page interface, you no longer will have the problem of accidentally typing the wrong patient or copying and pasting the wrong patient identifier because ReviewR actually goes through and hand enters on the back end the subject ID that you're seeing with the subject ID that's put into your REDCap instrument. So you will always have the right patient in your abstraction. Not only that, but we try and remove some of the repetitive data entry that you have to do. So um, a lot of times we're doing these very large chart review processes and we've got a number of reviewers and we need to record who did the abstraction. ReviewR uses a uh, configuration panel that will allow you to enter in who you are at the very beginning of your review and then automatically populate it through your REDCap instrument for every chart that you review, which is awesome. 
And this configuration panel is also how ReviewR knows which field in your REDCap instrument is the appropriate place to put your patient identifier. And the thing that's great is that this is all just using REDCap on the back end. And I know you just came from a REDCap presentation. And you know, I love REDCap, it's the best. And so what ReviewR does is it makes use of the REDCap API. So each user gets their own API key, uses that to log in to ReviewR to record their chart abstractions. And this means you get all the benefits of REDCap. You get all the audit logging, you can track everything that's ever happened, and it's right there ready for you. So um, this writes the data from the API, you can edit as you go through and you change answers as you need to. Um, though we even have nice error handling. If you do change your answer, it will make sure and validate that that was something that you wanted to do in case you had an accidental misclick. Plus, we love all the new innovations in R. So huge effort with DT, um, leveraging data tables within Review R. So what that means is for every table, you can go through and filter or search um, at a column-based level. Or in that upper right-hand corner, you'll see there is a global search command. And this global search will apply across all of the different tabs. And if you know DT, you know that it has the super cool support for regular expressions. So here I can find hypertension and hyperlipidemia all at once. And because of the configurations that we have, it will automatically filter all the rows on the particular table that you're looking at to only those that have a match and highlight all of the matches. Plus, if you use that global search command, there's a streamlined workflow. So one of the things is I will um, be looking at a particular trait or phenotype of interest that I'm pulling out. And it's a lot easier instead of trying to answer all 20 abstraction questions to just do one at a time and go through each record. Easy as pie to do that in Review R. When you use that global search and you just click that next button in the subject ID, it keeps the search. So you can just quickly go through each step of your review protocol, tab through each individual patient, save it, and come back and do the next process. Super straightforward. Not only that, but we support a lot of clinical data models. So we have flexible data model support and automated data detection. So here's an example of the data models that we support out of the box. So lots of different versions of the OMOC common data model. And for those of you that are looking for publicly available data sets, we also support the MIMIC-3 data model. Now, many of you are probably thinking to yourself, yeah, that's great, but I just have our source EDW or I have a custom research table. How can I have ReviewR help me? We've got a built-in help function. Now, this does take a little bit of programming expertise, but you'll be amazed at how close this gets you, even if you just know the very minor amount of our programming. So we have a dev add data model function that takes a CSV that's just a list of your tables and the fields in those tables. It will go through and interactively walk you through identifying which table has the list of all your patients. So something like the demographics table and then selecting the field that tells it what the patient identifier is. And this is what's critical to be able to link that patient identifier into the REDCap instrument. After you've identified those two data elements, it builds you three different files. It updates the database support RDA file, moves that CSV into the data raw file, and builds you a template R file that basically will do a direct representation of your data structure that you gave it in the CSV file. Now, for those of you that know things like OMOB, you really need to do some um, data joins to try and get it into something that looks fairly reasonable. You can automatically, not automatically, you can edit that in manually as you want into this .r file as you need. But if you just want to show a straight representation of the tables you have, do these steps and you're good to go. Already built in. So we do this for all of our internal data marts um, that we have on our campus so we can customize it for each of our different projects. And of course, data models are great. Databases are even more critical. 
So right now we support two primary databases, uh, Google BigQuery and Postgres. We also have a demo SQLite database that lets you actually play around with a reviewer without connecting it to real clinical data. So for things like Postgres, there's a standard connection panel where you need to put in your host name and your credentials and which database you want to use. But where there's some really cool development that David put into place is with BigQuery. So we have that standard sign in with Google link where you can go. And for those of you that are familiar with the tidyverse, you're familiar with using that uh, credential panel to log into your Google account. And then so cool. You can go in and choose all the Google projects that you're affiliated with, all the data sets that you're affiliated with. So you can choose exactly which GCP project you want to use in ReviewR for this effort. But wait, there's more. All of this is modular. So do you have a Shiny app that you use GCP products for and you want to build this connector? Congratulations, that's a plug and play independent module that will give you the connection object that you can go plug into your own Shiny app. Redcap, also plug and play. In fact, every aspect of our review our Shiny app is modularized. It all uses Gollum, so it's a nice, simple install on CRAN to just install packages.reviewr. And David has spent an exorbitant amount of time doing really great documentation, both at the function layer external and internal functions, as well as a lot of different um, uh, explanation docs to actually walk you through how to use ReviewR, how to customize ReviewR. So if you wanted to say, you know, use uh, MySQL instead of Postgres, all you have to do is build that connection object. And we have a whole process to walk you through how to do that. As you're thinking about deploying, you can do this in your own local R instance, or if you're an organization that has a data warehouse and your data warehouse team wants to enable this for their users, you can do server-based deployment. So with that, I want to thank the amazing development team. Like I said, David has really taken the lead on ReviewR and done an amazing job. I just started with some dinky little shiny app that I built for teaching. Um, and he is the one that found Gollum, figured out how to do all of the modularization. And then Luke is a fantastic collaborator at Northwestern, software developer, who's really helped us understand some of the, um, let's just say, more challenging aspects of trying to make Shiny look and feel nice and new. And of course, um, I love our wonderful little logo, Hex logo for reviewer, with our nod to Redcap, because Redcap is the best. And with that, I'd love to take any questions that you might have. Wow, what an awesome last talk for this uh, first day of our medicine 2021. Thank you so much, Laura, uh, for this presentation. And uh, so uh, everybody, uh, please please uh, give, give Laura a hand in the chat. Uh, and I'm gonna pull up um, the, the Q&A. So, so we have four questions. The most upvoted question is, um, how is the data getting from the EMR to review R? Yeah, so that's a great question. In this case, we have designed review R to operate with your EDW, your local data warehouse. So one of the things that we'd love to do someday maybe is try and build in like an HL7 Fire connection so that it can actually like plug and play into Epic itself or Sharner. Um, but that's a ways off. Really, we're thinking about um, in a lot of scenarios where you're trying to do research and you can't access Epic and you're trying to just come up with a better way to see these data. The other thing that that then allows you to do is let's say you're at an institution with a really advanced EDW and you have de-identified clinical notes. Now we can actually do non-human subjects based research because it's de-identified and actually do chart review on those data in an easier way that doesn't rely on Epic. Uh, another question, what R API package do, do you use? Redcap R or the Red, or Redcap API? Another great question that thankfully David answered because I don't know. <laughs> uh, apparently the answer is both. And this reminds me of a lot of conversations that I remember us having as we were developing Review R, um, where each of them handle things slightly differently. And so some of the information that we need 
um, to set up and track review R comes from one package. And then the actual connection objects we need to build and send data back and forth comes from another. Don't ask me which one, I don't know. <laughs> but I am sure that David would be happy to answer those kinds of technical questions um, in more detail. Um, one more question. Uh, please elaborate on OMOP. How was the mapping done? Does the reviewer have the mapping? Uh, great question. So um, at Colorado, OMOP is done by our data warehouse. That tends to be um, the most common scenario for a lot of EDW teams, um, that it's coming from a different source. And the researcher, again, really depends on each institution. At our institution, we do actually have very robust documentation on the data mapping process, but you have to know who to ask to get it. Um, <laughs> God love um, all of the interpersonal socio-technical um, opportunities with EHR-based research. But in this case, again, reviewers not sort of doing those mappings. It's really more this viewing tool on top of an EDW without really putting in um, sort of opinionated views on what that data should look like. Our goal is to build the most flexible um, tool to help support you do your work easier. All right. Even it looks like you had asked the question, we're using our REDCap APIs. <laughs> All right, with that, I would like to thank uh, Laura again, and thanks for a fantastic presentation. And, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll close the session and, 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 and hop, move over to the closing remarks. Thank you.